What's going on there, folks? Good evening. The Earthmaster here on the live stream uh, with an update video on this Thursday evening, uh, February 3rd, 2022. It is about 6.25 p.m. California time, and the latest quake out there on the globe is going to be a 2.9 earthquake into the Hawaii region. Let's go ahead and check out this movement out there in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, stirring up out there in Hawaii. Uh, this is the all magnitudes map here showing the movement across the southeast region here and also seen a line of activity from over here southeast up through the Mauna Loa area and continuing over here to the west so uh, it's kind of kind of an odd little pattern that's going on here but we're definitely noticing uh, some earthquake activity relatively shallow here uh, within the region of Mauna Loa 2.9 of course this hasn't erupted since about 1984 uh, and there's no doubt uh, it's beyond the intervals that normally um, that, that it pauses for. So this thing will probably uh, be active in the near future as far as the eruptive stages go. But uh, definitely looking at some activity building out here to the west and to the east. Southeast flank region, pretty typical movement down there. Lohi Seamount, uh, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on offshore in, the, uh, in that area of Hawaii. Uh, Lucian Trench looking pretty active, including movement around the Davidoff Volcano area here to the west as well. Uh, activity kicking up. Threes and some twos, even a 4.6 out here. Uh, just right around the uh, Lucian Trench area. 19.5 kilometers below surface for that movement. And also some further activity building up here along the trench and into the Gulf of Alaska. We did see that 5.4 earlier. And also some movement here into... Uh, just prior to the subduction zone of the North America and the Pacific plate boundary. Some pretty shallow earthquake activity uh, sitting off the plate boundary to the south. 4.9 uh, largest in that little sequence of earthquakes up there through the Alaska region. Uh, looks pretty typical for activity. The uh, Kuro Kamchaka Trench remains relatively quiet except for this earthquake, deep earthquake. Uh, late, uh, late last night, or actually early this morning, this 4.2 struck off the coast of Russia, but into the Kuro Kamchaka Trench at 375 kilometers downstream. Philippine Plate looks pretty quiet. We did see one little earthquake here uh, just around the uh, Philippines area with a 5.0 and some further movement as well around the uh, Indonesia area with a 4.5. Pretty deep movement just now within the last hour right at the southern end of the Philippine Trench. 231.4 kilometers, some deep activity there in the Indonesia region. Also an earthquake just right within the last hour, kind of kicking up here again along the Kermadec Trench, including a 5.0 and a, pro, a prior 4.9 earlier this morning. So things starting to shuffle around again is the key word. We did see some activity uh, work its way into the South America region. With a 6.0 earthquake here, 6.5 to be exact in the Peru area this morning. Uh, late last night, early this morning. Haven't seen any further aftershock sequences here in the Peru area. Uh, movement to the south. Looking, uh, I believe all this activity was pretty much prior. There was a little bit of earthquake activity much further south than the 6.5 along the Peru-Chile trench down here. So some deeper activity continues along this region of the subduction zone and uh, continued activity it looks like off the coast of the el salvador area we did see this movement uh early this morning as well and throughout the day a 4.5 and a 4.1 the puerto rico area looks like it's dying down a little bit in the earthquake activity not as active although it is kind of a little bit still heightened on the all magnitudes map here with 23 earthquakes Mostly occurring right there in that little swarm on the southwest area of uh, Puerto Rico. Let's go ahead and check out the states here. Eastern part looks pretty quiet. A little bit of activity. This is older movement here in Oklahoma and Kansas. And uh, west coast showing some activity as well. Did see an earthquake off the coast of Oregon into the Blanco Fracture Zone. Of course, we, we had that pretty good swarming back in... Um, Back in December, I believe it was, we had quite a few fours and fives kicking up here around this area of the Blanco Fracture Zone. Kind of uh, putting a lot of strain out here. Further strain along the Cascadia. It's already underneath strain. But uh, we did see that 4.0 strike earlier today. Pacific Northwest still showing some movement around Mount St. Helens. 
and the uh, Longview, Washington area. This activity right here is relatively deep, 15 to 18 kilometers below surface, and uh, leading me to believe that could be associated with some trimmer act or uh, uh, possible trimmer activity downstream. Of course, then again, uh, the trimmer does go down about 25 to 35 kilometers into the subduction zone. But uh, nonetheless, this is some deep earthquake activity here just to the west of St. Helens uh, Volcano. Specifically, right around the Mount St. Helens Volcano, typical where we'd see earthquake activity on a volcano. Two to three, even some negative um, amounts there, meaning a very shallow uh, surface earthquake there at Mount St. Helens. And some activity stir stirring up here around Spirit Lake to the northeast as well. Mount Rainier showing some movement to the west. And uh, things just kind of kind of uh, kicking up a little bit in the earthquake department around those volcanoes. Let's check out the trimmer map here in the Pacific Northwest. And we're looking at uh, 200. That's a pretty significant number. I can honestly say it's been quite a while since we've seen the two, uh, almost 300 epicenters of trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone here. It's a pretty big number. Could explain the further back building of pressure up here along the locked area and also the plate boundary over here along the Blanco fracture zone showing uh, some signs of what's going on down dip downstream here of the Cascadia 288 epicenters. Mostly there in the Oregon area, southern coastal range, a little bit into the very southern end of the uh, Cascadia which kind of dips here in this fashion. Uh, into Northern California, or I should say under Northern California there. It's a pretty good amount of uh, trimmer. I was looking at uh, earthquake activity uh, within the past, uh, well, since we've been keeping records and whatnot of uh, earthquake activity in the deeper range, a little bit further down dip of the trimmer activity. Uh, still, still associated with the Cascadia subduction zone, but uh, further, if you will, uh, down below the trimmer activity. And it's definitely been some sizable earthquakes uh, and down there at a uh, the uh, level that that I was referring to, 70 kilometers, 59 kilometers, uh, way down there into the areas deep into the subduction zone. We haven't seen one of these in a while. I think the last one was 2001 to 6.8 outside of Olympia and Tacoma. I remember hearing about this one, but uh, it's been a while. A little bit of buildup. Looks like we got intervals there of at least uh, 15 years or so. We could be coming up possibly on a, uh, another potential uh, deep subduction zone quake with the lack of trimmer that we've seen uh, in several weeks now. Of course, this uptick in trimmer, uh, that's the old trimmer map, trimmer map tonight right here. Um, still, it's relatively quiet up here through the uh, Pacific Northwest and this area of the Cascadia. Uh, so I wouldn't doubt if we start seeing maybe some earthquakes uh, down dip there where uh, we could be uh, stuck a little bit uh, in the trimmer area. Uh, what else we got here in the Yellowstone department? Uh, there's the signature of that 6.5 in the Peru area this morning. Showing up on all the seismograph stations pretty nicely, except for a couple of them that are tuned. Uh, I don't know how they're tuned. They don't look properly tuned, though, because it's not picking up these distant quakes. Most of these stations there uh, showing that sizable earthquake at a distance. Really no localized earthquake activity that I can see. Maybe one up here around the Upper Falls area. But uh, overall, things pretty pretty mellow in the Yellowstone area. That's kind of been that way for quite a while now. Uh, what else we got here in the Earthquake Activity Department? Uh, well, what do we got? Puerto Rico, yeah, a little bit of movement in Southern Cal as well. The uh, eastern part of the Sierra Nevada. Look at this activity stretching up to the lake up here, Pyramid Lake. A little bit of uh, linear activity up here. On the eastern edge, nothing significant, uh, but it's definitely showing up uh, on these maps pretty nicely. Some further activity through the Nevada area and also the Ridgecrest region here. But uh, overall, no major swarming to report and activity actually within the last hour. I don't see any red dots here on the west coast as far as uh, earthquake activity within the last hour. So kind of just uh, keeping an eye on it. Let's go ahead and check out the St. Helens activity a little bit more in detail. Go over here to the uh, volcanic volcano seismicity map here at uh, Mount St. Helens. And we'll see what these guys are popping up. As far as the local seismograph stations here, kind of like to look at these once in a while. 
and uh, observe the raw data that comes in there from the seismographs. I see a couple here already kind of in the background of all this noise, but uh, definitely some spikes here within the last couple hours. And uh, let's check out the previous day, which includes earlier today. Uh, there's a 2.6 near Morton showing up, 2.6 near Longview. And, uh, man, it's kind of hard to tell on this map here specifically, but um, definitely see some earthquake activity in there at the uh, Mount St. Helens area. Check out this different station, see if we can decipher anything a little bit more in detail out here as it sits and spins and waits. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, these guys kind of slow, look at that. Definitely not my internet, uh, but the pnsn.org network. All right, well, we will move on um, from that area. Far as earthquake activity in the uh, rest of the Pacific out here, Tonga, pretty quiet. We're not seeing any further development out here, at least according to the USGS map. Go ahead and check out the EMSC model. And uh, we'll see if we can get these guys here. Okay, it's kind of just a little on the odd side. Uh, 5.0 on the Kermadec Trench. Some further activity down the Middle America Trench here, but uh, far as any threes and whatnot, let's go ahead and zoom in and we can check that out in a little bit more detail. Uh, let's see here what we got. Yeah, so not a lot here within the uh, Tonga area. Definitely a, quite a bit of movement there in the three range up and down the Middle America Trench and the South America region. Yeah, pretty much everything that USGS is showing uh, still kind of kind of verifying there on the EMSC map. So uh, what do we got here in space weather? Not a whole lot going on, I believe. We had little activity last night that they kind of amplified. This thing is always changing on the forecast. It was green when I was doing the update last night. And, of course, we had a G1 storm come in as a surprise. Unexpected geomagnetic storm. See that in the uh, KP index of 5 up there in the red. And it uh, looks like they've amplified the uh, at least next couple nights here uh, possible uh, geomagnetic unrest at the uh, higher latitude so we'll see we'll see if that holds true or not uh, flare threat still remains uh, an obvious threat for C flare and M flare X flare has been downgraded to a 5% chance uh, from the sunspots here this one's kind of getting out of view we left dealing with 2939 2940 and a couple other ones popping up here so sun's coming back to life, it looks like. Yay. And uh, we'll see what it wants to do as we head into the uh, into the uh, week and the weekend. We'll see what happens. All right, folks, going to jump off here. Have a good night. Please stay safe out there. And we will chat you guys another time. Have a good night.